Most people think the last invasion of Britain was at Hastings in 1066. But they're wrong. That dubious claim to fame actually belongs to Fishguard here in West Wales. In 1797, 1,400 French troops landed at Caraguastad near Fishguard. Equipped with 50 tonnes of grenades and 2,000 guns, they swarmed inland. Things looked bleak. Fishguard's volunteer army were out working in the fields and the fort only had three cannonballs. Since their revolution eight years earlier, the French had been spreading ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity across Europe. They'd been at war with Britain for years and now they were in fish guard. This was the farmhouse belonging to John Mortimer and it became the French headquarters. Now, why did they choose fish guard? Well, you know, it was never meant to be fish guard. They never intended to come to fish guard at all. Um, the plan was that there was to be an invasion of Ireland. And in order for the invasion of Ireland to work, there had to be two diversionary raids to pull the English fleet away from them. So the one to Newcastle and one to Bristol. The one to Newcastle never happened. Bristol, that's this lot. They got as far as Lundy Island and they realised the wind and the tide were against them. So they just turned around, mm -hmm. sailed up the Welsh coast and came to Fishguard. So what was their plan? What did they want to achieve? They thought that Wales was a hotbed of revolution and that the, all of the Welsh, would, when they saw these Frenchmen coming, would simply join them. They'd rise up, they'd throw off the yoke of English tyranny and join the French and so take England out of the war. But the French liberators did little to enlist Welsh support. Discovering large quantities of wine, which locals had salvaged from a recent wreck, they were soon drunk and running amok. A raiding party even looted St Gwyndaf's church and set fire to it. Phil, tell us what the army would have been like. <laughs> to put it mildly, they were the worst soldiers ever. Most of this legion were actually made up of convicts or soldiers who nobody else wanted because nobody was going to risk good soldiers on what was a fairly forlorn hope. And they came ashore and they were out of control. And uh, desecrated this place, didn't they? They, they did. I mean, if, if you just look here, I mean, this is the Bible. This was the church Bible. Uh, and they rip it to shreds. They take out whole chapters, whole chunks of it, and they use it as material to light fires. Uh, but the French had no concept that this was important. The, the, all they were concerned was this was a means of keeping warm because this was fuel. And it wasn't just the Bible. If, if, look at this. That chalice is, was stolen by the French, later turned up in Carmarthen, would you believe? Somebody tried to sell it in Carmarthen. By now, the locals had had enough of their uninvited guests. Legend has it that Jemima Nicholas, a cobbler's wife, armed herself with a pitchfork and captured 12 drunken Frenchmen. Hundreds of women in red shawls are said to have masqueraded as British soldiers to scare off the invaders, who were beginning to mutiny. Phil, is there any truth in these stories about the women of Fishguard? <laughs> At this distance, it's very hard to say, and the fact, I think, has been mixed up with the fable and it's become a bit of a fantasy. But what is true is that the women, the Welsh women in their, their red shawls and their black hats did come to witness what was going on, and the French, from a distance, frightened, half drunk, desperate to get out of this situation, probably did mistake them for soldiers. No, but it does seem a bit of a farce, this whole thing. The whole story is one of farce. It, it, it's, 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 it's worthy of Gilbert and Sullivan, isn't it, really? A small British army eventually showed up and the invaders surrendered immediately in the local pub. The entire French army was marched off to prison, having achieved very little, apart from putting Fishguard firmly on the map. After just three days, the last invasion of Britain collapsed and nobody's been brave enough to try it again since. <laughs>